Hi guys, welcome back to another video. You guys are gonna get ready with me, but this is going to be girl talk edition. This video is for us girls and us girls only. I asked you guys on Instagram to give me girl talk questions. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. First, we're gonna start with the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. I'm almost out of this, I need to buy a new one. That thing has lasted me so long now because I bought that like months ago. So the first question is, what's free therapy to you? I really like this question because I feel like there is a bunch of free therapy out in the world. For me, it's honestly just doing things that make me happy. If I am just in a bit of a rut, not feeling good, sad, just not overall happy, I take myself to the beach. <laughs> I literally always take myself to the beach to like go watch sunset and just like be one with nature but not everyone lives by a beach so i guess some other ones would be like reading or listening to music like that's a big thing for me i put my airpods in and i just like sit in my bed or sit in the car or wherever and just listen to music i do really like to journal i like write down my feelings how i'm doing like that helps it's kind of in the same sense of going to a therapist but your therapist is your journal so i don't know i think it just varies for everyone like if there are certain things that make you happy and like give you joy then do those things. I've actually have had two therapists. My most recent one was my senior year. I used to go to therapy, not anymore. And I do think actual therapy does work because it works for me because I no longer go there. You just gotta find something that makes you feel relaxed and carefree and like just takes your mind away from things. And that's what I do with like activities. Like I just keep myself busy. I feel like there's just so many things you can do to make it like free therapy. Next question is, will it actually ever get better after having really bad breakup. I feel like this is a very fitting question for me. <laughs> I'm gonna say yes, but it's gonna be really difficult and it's gonna suck. You're gonna be sad. You're gonna be hurt. It just is a really long process. It's different for everyone, but for me, I have been through a really bad breakup to the point where I just was like not okay after it happened, but that was like a year and like a couple months ago and look at me now. Like I'm thriving, like I'm doing so well on my own, like I'm genuinely happy with my life. It's just gonna take time. That's really the only thing I can say like there's no right or wrong way to cope with a bad breakup you're gonna be sad you're gonna be hurt you're gonna feel like your life is falling apart that's just how it is I think the one thing with breakups is that you just have to accept what happened even though you don't want to because you're like why would they do this to me like what happened like am I not good enough like you start to overthink with just everything and like who you are as a person at least I did move on but don't forget what happened because if you sit there and dwell on the past and the relationship you're never gonna move on you're never gonna be able to move forward in the future. Next question is how do you deal with period cramps and moods, etc.? So a little bit about, I guess, my period. We're gonna get a little personal. So I got my period when I was in fourth grade. So my period lasts seven days, the full week. And on top of that, I have a really heavy flow, especially within the first four days. Day five, six, and seven, like barely like I have a period. <laughs> so usually when my cramps are like really bad within the first three days, I just just take ibuprofen. That's like the best thing that helps with my cramps or just like eases the pain. And then sometimes if it's like really bad and the ibuprofen isn't working, I'll also use like a heating pad. And that's really all I do for my period cramps. It's kind of funny because I'm actually on my period right now. And for this week, I basically laid in bed and I just took ibuprofen. They weren't as bad as they usually are, but when they're severely uncomfortable, like I, I'm on, I'm on bed rest because I can't ever do anything. So yeah, that's really all I do for my period cramps. It's not much. Ibuprofen is literally just my best friend. Midol I have taken before, but I feel like that is such a scam. Like Midol does nothing for me. I used it once and I felt like it made my cramps worse. It didn't do anything to like help ease the pain or nothing. So I don't use Midol. I just use ibuprofen. I drink a lot of water. As far as the moods, you know, I, I can't really do anything about that. <laughs> I started my period like five days ago, four days ago, and I went to the gym like a couple nights ago, full on mental breakdown. And I'm pretty sure it was because of my period. Like I get super, super emotional. I don't necessarily get sad. I get more like angry, like irritated. Like the slightest thing will make me angry. If you know how to control them, please let me know. Cause I don't know how. I go through like a roller coaster of emotions during the seven days. If you have mastered a way to make yourself feel good during your period, I would love to know. <laughs> the next thing is more of a topic than a question. And that is birth control. I don't think I've ever talked about birth control on my channel before. So 
so this is a first. I have never been on birth control and I'm 19 and I don't plan on it. Truthfully, I'm scared of it. And that's why like, I, I don't ever wanna go on it. So I went to the doctor like a year ago for my yearly checkup and I was talking about my periods and my doctor was like, you should totally go on birth control to like help control your period. And I told her no, like I flat out said no, like I don't want to, like don't ever recommend this to me again. Like I, I don't know, obviously birth control is different for everyone. Some of my friends have had great experiences. Some of my friends haven't. I don't know, that's just not a chance I'm willing to take. And I feel like if I went on birth control just for the sake of my period cramps, I feel like I would get the worst end of the side effects. <laughs> and I don't really have a reason to go on birth control. If I ever thought about going on it, it would literally just be for my periods. I can't really talk about this topic too much because I don't have any personal experience with it. I'm not on it. And I don't plan on ever going on it. And it's kind of funny, like some of my friends that I talk to about it, like they have like the same thought about birth control. Like they're scared to go on it. Like they don't want to. We would rather endure the pain of our periods. Honestly, I could be really wrong and I could have a great experience with birth control and not get any of the side effects. And it does help my period, but that's just something I'm not like willing to risk, you know? So I don't know. If you are a girl and you are watching this, let me know kind of like your thoughts behind birth control. And if you have been on it, got off of it. Like I've just heard so many different stories and like when you're an overthinker, like, oh my gosh, like this is not for me. <laughs> I just made the decision never to go on it because it just solves all my problems. <laughs> Thoughts on kids. Me personally, I love kids. I don't know if anyone knows this, but before me and my family started doing YouTube, my mom owned two daycares and I was just always around kids, young kids, babies. And when I was at the age where I could help my mom with the daycare, like help with the babies. Like that was my favorite part was just like working with kids and like babies, and especially at a young age. And I don't know, I just, I, I love kids. and I want kids so bad. Not now, obviously, like I'm 19. I've talked about this before. Like obviously I'm not ready for that. And I don't even like have a boyfriend. Like <laughs> it's gonna take a minute to, you know, actually start thinking about having kids. I want them so bad. Like I just want mini me's. I just wanna be a mom. That's like my biggest goal in life is to be a mom and like have a family of my own. So my thoughts on kids, I know they're a pain in the ass. I know that they're a lot. I just want kids. Next question is, what do you look for in a man? Guys, I made a standards list. <laughs> it's not finished though, but here is basically what's on my standards list. Cause it's like a trend on TikTok. I never made the TikTok. TikTok though, but I still have the list. So <laughs> let me find it. This is so funny. I think all of these should be standards for everyone else. So if you know you're with someone like right now, like talking to a guy or in a relationship and he doesn't do any of these, you need to break up with him. We'll start at the top. Plans, dates, surprises, good relationship with his family and his, loyal. I put that in all caps with three exclamation points. <laughs> can make me laugh and be myself around him. Good with kids, has goals, ambitions, knows what he wants, can have deep conversations, supportive no matter what is a man of his word, respectful, takes pride in hygiene himself and dress, physical touch. You, ha you have to like physical touch. Like I love physical touch. Knows how to communicate, doesn't share all of our business with other people and friends. That one's in caps and effort is also in caps. And I made some more dashes. I haven't finished my standards list, but like the list will be like a hundred different things, but those are like the most important ones. And I just think those are like the basic standards to look for in a guy. And it should be for every girl. So if he has all of those qualities. I'm on my knees. I'm begging for this man. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> With appearance though, like I don't really have like a specific type. The only thing I would say would be like, I want you to be tall. I don't really care what color hair you have. I don't care what color eyes you have. I don't care if you're skinny. I don't care if you're muscular. I don't care if you have a dad bod. Like if I like you for you, I like you. Especially when you have all of those qualities I just named off of my list. <laughs> Stretch mark tips. I'm so embarrassed of mine. No, 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 no. Girl, you you are not alone. Everyone gets stretch marks, okay? It is such a normal thing and it is something that you should not be embarrassed about. That's the one thing about my body that I just have accepted and I don't really care that I have stretch marks. I have them all over, like thighs, boobs, like they're everywhere, okay? And that's totally, totally normal. And if someone makes you feel bad about having stretch marks, they're a terrible person and you do not need to listen to them. You can't really do anything about them, not that I'm aware of, and you shouldn't have to worry about doing anything to them like they're just part of your body like it's just bound to happen you just have to remind yourself that it's normal you're beautiful your stretch marks are beautiful and just tell yourself that every single day how to love yourself and your body the only reason why i want to talk about this is because it is 
truly something that I struggle with as a girl. And you know, I preach self-love. And uh, honestly, the one thing I struggle with within myself is my body image and how I perceive myself. You know, I get a lot of hate for me constantly wearing sweatshirts and running shorts. That's literally all I wear every single day. But um, the reason why I wear that is because I would rather wear that than wear jean shorts and a tight top. That shows off my body because I'm so self-conscious about it. And that's one of the reasons why I love winter because I can wear sweatpants and I can wear a baggy sweatshirt. And I don't have to worry about if my fat rolls are rolling over my jean shorts or wearing a bikini and going to the beach where I'm like basically fully naked, which is honestly sad. And I shouldn't feel like that, but I do. And I'm sure there's a lot of other people that feel like that and I just, just wish we didn't. It's just something that I've struggled with all my life, especially recently. My social media kind of went through a phase of my TikTok search bar being Emma Marie weight gain. And at that point I was already feeling shitty about myself and add that on top, like it just doesn't make you feel good. And so I would rather wear clothing that hides my body so people can't comment on it. And also, so I feel confident. Like I feel so much better when I'm just like consumed in clothing rather than wearing a crop top and shorts. I know I'm supposed to sit here and give advice about these topics, but this is something that I can't because I'm not gonna just put out false advice when that's not how I feel and it's not true. I would just rather be real with you guys than sit here and give fake advice because I definitely don't have self-confidence within my body and I would be lying if I said I did. But again, I do know that my body is my body and that I should love it no matter what. But it's just really freaking hard, especially when we live in a society where the beauty standards are not my body type. That's just kind of where I'm at with the whole self-confidence, loving your body. I I'm just, I'm still trying to figure it out. Next is best advice for not breaking no contact with your ex. Block him. That's what I did. <laughs> Come on, girl. You can do this. <laughs> I've never been in a situation where I felt the need to break no contact. Like, I don't want to speak to any of my exes. So it's easier for me because I don't like them. And I would never want to speak to them again. But if you are someone where, you know, you miss your ex, you like still love them, you know, you want to be with them. It's not worth it. Why did, why did you guys break up in the first place? If y'all were meant to be, y'all would have never broke up. If you broke up for a bad reason, then there is no reason to go back to him. <laughs> Next is first time advice. I don't really think there is any advice that could prepare you for your first time. I think it just comes down to who you're going to be doing it with. But if I was to give advice, my advice would be just to make sure you're doing it with someone that you truly love. Someone that makes you feel safe. Someone that makes you feel comfortable. Someone you can feel comfortable being around. Just someone that makes you feel loved. And if you have all of those factors, it's it's gonna be a great first time. I don't really think you can prepare for your first time by hearing someone else's story or how theirs went. I just think it really comes down to who you're choosing to do it with. So yeah, that is my advice. Next topic is how to find the right friends. I think when it comes down to finding the right people and the right friends, you'll know. You won't have to question the friendship. You won't have to question their intentions, you'll just know deep down that they are the right people for you and they're gonna be in your life for a really long time. Oh, I hate reading this. Why do guys always leave me? Am I just not good enough? God, sometimes I can hate guys because why on earth would a guy make a girl feel like that? <sighs> Us girls just want to be happy and to find the perfect boyfriend, but then we feel like crap and then we think, are we not good enough? Like, oh, it's just so annoying. My answer to your question is, it's not you, it's the guys. And you are are 100% good enough. You just have to remind yourself that you're a boss ass bitch and the only reason why they left you is because they can't handle you. You're too pretty, you're too sexy, you're too smart and they felt intimidated by you and so that's why they left because they had to downgrade to their standards, which is not you. You are above their standards. <laughs> you're just an overall better person and they suck. <laughs> so to you, Mackenzie, thinking that you are not good enough, you are 100% good enough and if I was a boy, I would love love and be honored to be with someone like you. Next question is what products, razors do you use to shave your legs, armpits, and the downstairs area? I actually use a men's razor. This one right here. I don't know the name of it and it's like a five blade I think and I've used that razor all my life ever since I started shaving. I actually have never had any problems or like nicks with that razor. I tried to use a girl razor two months ago just to see and I hated it. I cut up my legs so much. They were blue bleeding in the shower. And so I just stuck with my men's razor. For my armpits, I don't really use any shaving cream. The only time I'll use shaving cream 
same as for my legs. As far as other products, I do exfoliate my legs with like a tree hut exfoliator. And then the downstairs area, I don't use anything. I just shave it. <laughs> Might be shocking to some girls because I feel like they have like a perfected shaving routine. I don't. I feel like I'm not a girl's girl when it comes to shaving. I feel kind of left out. Like I don't fit in because my shaving routine is so basic. I don't really do anything spectacular for the downstairs area when it comes to shaving. And I feel like I should. So if you guys have like a perfected like shaving routine for basically everywhere, let me know. Cause I would love to, you know, learn a few fave products. What's your opinion on friends with benefits? Honestly, I really don't have an opinion. If you know, you're with someone and it's simply just friends with benefits, like that's you, like do you. I personally would never get myself involved in a friends with benefits only relationship. Cause that's just not who I am. And I wouldn't be able to do the no strings attached. Like I would 100% catch feelings. Like I don't know how people like actually do friends with benefits without catching feelings. Or does that even happen? Like, I don't know. I just, I would never be able to do it. For the people that do like props to them. Cause I feel like that's like a really freaking hard thing to do. All right guys, I just finished my makeup. Here is the finished makeup look. So that means that those are all of the topics, questions I am going to be answering. I love doing this type of video cause you get personal and you can talk about girl things. And I know my audience is mostly just girls, which makes me so happy that we can like sit here and like, I don't know, like talk to each other. Well, one-sided, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I'll see you very soon back with more videos. Bye guys.